hello dear students so this is the video lecture number three for software engineering so in this video lecture we are going to revise the whatever we have learned in our online classes so today we are starting with the basic software development lifecycle model that is classical waterfall model the classical waterfall model is one of the oldest software development lifecycle model it is very simple but idealistic earlier this model was very popular but nowadays it is not in use but still this software classical waterfall model has its own importance because all other software development lifecycle models are derived using this classical waterfall model this classical waterfall model divides the entire life cycle into set of phases this model consider that the one phase can start after only completion of previous phase that is the output of one phase will be the input for next phase thus the development process can be considered as sequential flow in waterfall so this is the diagrammatic representation of classical waterfall model this classical waterfall model divide the entire life cycle into six different phases started starting from feasibility study to maintenance the and this model is also known as sequential model because only after completion of previous phase then can we, then we can move to our next phase so the for example after completion of feasibility study then only we can perform requirement analysis and specification similarly after successful completion of requirement analysis and specification then only we can perform design phase similarly coding and unit testing similarly integration and system testing similarly maintenance and one thing we need to remember in this waterfall model in this classical waterfall model we don't have any feedback path which means if we made a mistake during feasibility study or if we made a mistake during requirement analysis and specification phase then we move to our next phase that is design phase during the design phase we realized that we had made a mistake during requirement analysis and specification so that from design phase we can't move to requirement analysis and specification to correct that errors so from any next phase we can't move to it previous phase or any other previous phases so that this model does not contain any feedback path so major disadvantages of this model is there is no feedback path so that we can't make a changes or rectify our errors made in made during previous phases so this is the diagrammatic representation so the first phase of this classical waterfall model is feasibility study the main aim of feasibility study is to determine whether the product is financially feasible financially and technically feasible to develop or not if the product is financially and technically feasible to develop then we need to formulate the different solution to solve that particular problem among the different solution we need to identify the best solution on the basis of benefits and drawback after selecting the best solution then we need to carry out all other activities using that particular solution so this is the main aim so these are the main aim of feasibility study after feasibility study then we need to perform requirement analysis and specification the aim of requirement analysis and specification phase is to understand the exact requirement of customer and document them properly this requirement analysis and specification phase are further divided into two sub phases that is requirement gathering and analysis and requirement specification in requirement analysis in requirement gathering and analysis first we all first we need to collect all the relevant in all the information from the customer then we need to remove incomplete and inconsistent information so in requirement gathering and analysis first we need to collect all the information from the client regarding the software that we are going to develop then we need to remove incomplete and inconsistent information after removing the incomplete and inconsistent information during requirement specification phase then this analysis requirement are document in software requirement specification document this srs document serve as a contract between development team and customer any future dispute between the customers and the developers can be settled using this srs document so this is the activity so this are the activities that we need to perform during 
requirement analysis and specification so next phase is design the aim of design phase is to transform the requirement specified in SRS document into the structure that is suitable for implementation in some programming language so the main aim of design is to prepare a blueprint blueprint for entire system further this blueprint can be converted into the source code usually we perform two type of design first one is high level design and low level design don't worry we have a separate chapter we have a separate chapter for design so we are going to learn the different types of design issue and what are the different types of design models are available we are going to learn it in details in our upcoming video so don't worry for timing consider that the design is the phase where we can build or we can design the blueprint of the entire system so after design we can perform coding and unit testing in any software in any software development farm the large software may divide among different modules and assign to the individual team so the modules are the subset of that particular program or particular software so that the each module need to code it independently so this is known as coding the coding and coding is considered as the converting the high level design into some source code using some programming language so the unit coding unit testing means the after successful completion of each module coding of each module then we need to test that particular module is known as the unit testing the aim of unit testing is testing phase is to check whether each module is working properly or not after successful coding and unit testing then we need to perform integration and system testing integration means combining the combining the whatever module available to make a whole system so integration means the combining of all module to make a whole working system is known as integration so after integration then we need to perform system testing so usually the system testing are three types three types of system testing first one is alpha testing second one is beta testing and third one is acceptance testing alpha testing is the system testing performed by development team beta testing is the system testing performed by friendly set of customer and the accepted test acceptance testing are the testing system testing which are pro which are done by the actual customer the customer perform the accepted testing to determine whether to accept the accept the deliver deliver software or to reject it so these are the different types of testing and after then after that we need to perform maintenance so the maintenance is the last phase but one of the most time consuming phase of entire software development the effort spent on maintenance is 60 percentage of total effort spent to develop a full software so there are basically three types of maintenance first one is corrective maintenance second one is perfective maintenance third one is adaptive maintenance the corrective maintenance is carried out to correct errors that were not discovered during production or development phase so corrective maintenance are usually performed to find out the bugs that we haven't encountered during development phase the second type is perfective maintenance this type of maintenance is is carried out to enhance the functionality of system based on customer requirement if the customer requires required to update some features of existing software that types of maintenance comes under the perfective maintenance and the adaptive maintenance is usually required for putting putting the software to work in new environments such as work on new computer platform or within a new operating system for example if your client requests you to update this software that currently working on windows but now this customer want to work the customer want to port that particular software to linux also so that type of software is this type of updation is known as the adaptive maintenance so these are the brief overview of the classical waterfall model now we are going to learn the drawbacks of classical waterfall model this classical waterfall model have mainly three drawbacks first one is no feedback path second one is difficult to accommodate changes and third one is no overlapping phase so these are the drawbacks so no no feedback path means 
we cannot make the changes if due to no feedback path we can't make the changes or we can't rectify our errors so this is the difficult to accommodate changes and no overlapping phase means we cannot perform two or more activities simultaneously because this model is sequential model so these are the drawback of classical waterfall model now we are going to learn the iterative waterfall model so iterative waterfall model is almost same as classical waterfall model except some changes made to increase the efficiency of the software development the iterative waterfall mod model provide the feedback path to every phases to its preceding phase which is which is the main difference from the classical waterfall model in so in this classical waterfall model we have a feedback but so if we make any mistake in our if we make any type of mistake in our previous phase we can move to that phase from any other phase so this is the main advantages of iterative waterfall model but one thing we need to remember in feasibility study we don't have any feedback path which means if we and take if we take a project or if we decided to develop a particular project then we can't we can't move or we can't simply ignore or we can't simply reject that project so this is the so this so this is the diagrammatic representation of iterative waterfall model the when uh, in iterative waterfall model so all other phases are phases are same as classical waterfall model but only difference is there is feedback path so that we can make changes whenever we whenever required so this are the so this is the diagrammatic representation of iterative waterfall model so this is the advantages first one is feedback path and second one is it is very simple but this type of model is only useful when the customer requirement is not changing and the team development team are well experienced to develop such kind of product then only we can use this type of sorry we can use the iterative waterfall model and if the project does not if the project does not have any type of risks then then can then only we can use this iterative waterfall model so in this video we are going to learn this two um, this two type of basic models in our upcoming video we are going to learn the remaining three types of model that is prototyping evolutionary and spiral model Thank you.